All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Couch Warrior Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Mike, and today I am with Gus Villamil, MMA fighter, recently coming off of a win. How are you doing, Gus? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. So I like to start all my interviews the same way. I like to go to the beginning, kind of ask you like how you got into the sport. So I know you come from a wrestling background. Is MMA something you were always into? Is that something you found later? Um, like like most uh, wrestlers, it's kind of the same uh, the same story. So I I didn't really um, MMA wasn't something like growing up that I was uh, doing. I I just I had wrestled. Um, and then after you finish, you know, wrestling, you know, you go to the gym, you're working out and, but you still have that itch for, for, you know, competition. Um, and I knew a couple MMA fighters, a couple ex teammates that, um, had gotten into MMA and I really didn't think it was something I would ever do. Um, you know, fighting, I would watch UFC and I was like, bro, these people are freaking psychopaths. <laughs> and, uh, I joined, uh, I joined an MMA gym and I was there for maybe a month and uh the manager of the gym asked me he goes hey we have a uh, amateur mma fights this weekend and would you want to fight and i was like i guess yeah whatever i mean and i didn't think anything. and then you know as it got closer i noticed how serious like everybody gets about it and how there was a fight poster and and they're they're giving me tickets to sell and then came the day and the weigh-ins and then the fight day, I see how many people are there. There's, it's in a nice little size club. And I was like, holy crap, they take this shit serious. And uh, I won by by uh, a guillotine in the first round. And it was it was an even better feeling than when I would wrestle because it's you're kind of, you know, taking the life from someone and a ref is saving it. Um, and just having my family and friends there and getting my hand raised, you know, it was it was a really high high that i was chasing for a while and then ever since then i've been chasing it nonstop. sweet so do you think like wrestling kind of prepared you for the spotlight or was it like kind of something new um no i i'd, I'd always um competed in in front of a lot of people um the wrestling community is pretty big um especially when you go to like states or regionals and districts you know there's a lot of people watching um the pressure was something i was already used to um, it, it's just a different dynamic, you know, it's, it's, you're fighting. So now it's, you know, you're, you can really get hurt. So that was the only difference was the dynamic of, uh, you know, getting knocked out in front of your friends and family or getting submitted. So, um, that hasn't happened and it won't ever happen with how hard oh, yeah. I can fight. It's the fight game, but it, I, I love it, man. It's, it's something I, I definitely, uh, enjoy and, and I'm grateful that I'm able to do every day. Did, did you start at the same gym you're at now or were you somewhere else at first? No, no. So Goshed's only been around for four years. So I started with uh, Goshed before we even were a gym. I was training with uh, Asim and Roy and then before we were a gym and we were just training out of other gyms. Um, but I started with MMA Masters. Yeah, sadly. OK, cool. But now, now you're with Goshed? Yeah, I'm with Goshed to the day I die. Are you training full time now? Oh, yeah. I've been training full time since I, I started my pro career uh, four years ago. Oh, sick. Uh, so I, I wanted to ask, what, what who came up with the nickname Pretty Boy? Where did that come from? Um, So so I, I everybody always says that I, I, uh, I'm really big on like how I dress and and I get a haircut every week um, and I, I go to weigh ins wearing fashionable clothes is what they say. Um, and I'm always meticulous about how, uh, uh, what gear I wear to the gym. So, so they, my teammates would always call me the pretty boy. My manager would always call me a pretty boy. So she, um, she, she just changed it and, uh, we ran with it. Yeah, I like it. I mean, there's definitely worse. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. De definitely worse. Uh, what, what would you say has been your hardest fight so far that you've had? Um, my, my hardest fight so far is is it's always for for every fighter you know the hardest fight is always your next fight um but for for me if i was to to put all my fights into one i i feel um my first loss the first fight i had against jason eastman was was definitely my hardest because of um a big part of it was the inexperience of you know me dropping him in the first round and then going crazy um and then gassing myself out i definitely made the fight a lot harder than it needed to be 
Um, but I haven't essentially had a, a really, really hard fight. Um, I prepare well. Um, that way I save myself from having a hard fight. Was it hard for you after taking your first loss? Like, was it something that, you know, kind of made you doubt or were you just like, um, okay, I'll learn from it? Not that? my first loss, not necessarily because it, it was, um, it was a, a, a good fight. Um, you know, he was a lot more experienced, a lot older, had a lot more fights. Um, and, and I was able to hurt him in the first round, almost take, you know, finish him in the first round with the flying knee. Um, my second loss, which was directly after that, that was, that was definitely, um, a lot harder on me, uh, mentally, um, because it, it does bring that self doubt. Like, man, if, if I can't beat these guys at a regional level, what, what do I think? How do I think I'm going to be in the UFC? So it definitely took, uh, some reflecting, um, some, some sit back and listen to my coaches, create that technical development so that I can, uh, be ready for the next level. Gotcha. Um, so I, I did want to ask, do you have any upcoming fights now coming up? Um, not, no, not necessarily. Um, my manager has been, uh, talking with, uh, um, the UFC for me to get on contenders now. Um, I do have a very good record. Um, I do believe I'm ready for it. Um, even short notice UFC I'm, I'm ready for, um, but no, I, I, at the moment, no, I'm still training, still staying ready. I haven't, I was back in the gym the two days after my fight. I have no injuries. Um, so, no, I'm just, just staying ready for, you know, the, that big opportunity. So you actually stole one of my questions right out from under me. I was going to ask if you're, like, speaking to the Contender Series now or management. Yeah, or yeah. So, there, so she, uh, my manager is, is speaking with them at the moment. Yeah, because you're on a nice little win streak. The last win, Max Quinones, that's a pretty damn good win. I know that a yeah. lot of people were looking at him as a prospect, too. Yeah, they definitely, definitely were. They, they were, they were doubting me big time. You were the underdog. Uh -huh. I, I do betting odds. I do shows uh, uh, for betting, and uh, you were, you were the underdog there. Yeah, um, I, I bet on myself. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, for that fight with Quinones, did you expect it to go the way you did, or did you uh, have a Absolutely. different game plan going in? Absolutely. It was. Um, if I've been, I said it since the day it was signed. Um, and we saw him, I knew that I was going to be able to finish him, um, especially with a submission. Uh, it wasn't anything I, I had, I had zero doubt that it was going to go that way. Um, I knew the type of fighting style he had. He was a Southpaw. He was very rangy. He throws his punches wide. He, he gets taken down pretty easily. Um, and my grappling is just, I'm very, very confident in my grappling. I've worked a lot on it. Technically it's gotten better. It still continued continues to get better. So I knew that once I, I took it to the ground, he would have no answers for me. So I actually wanted to ask coming from a wrestling background and being successful at it before you get into the MMA cage, is it hard to like make it like apply it to MMA or is it like just the same? Like you come in there just do what you used to do. Um, from the wrestling to to the MMA, like cage, yeah, on. like how different so, is it just traditionally wrestling and then doing it in the in the cage? So it it does translate pretty well, but you have to make sure that for MMA, in my opinion, I think the best fighters are the ones that can um, mix both together. So you have the fighters that will, um, you know, they'll sh they'll use just one thing and they'll strike, and or they'll either wrestle. Um, you have to be able to you know intertwine the both. Of them and and you know do both which is use your striking to wrestle or use your wrestling to strike so i'm i'm smart enough um to be able to do the both where i'll use my wrestling to strike or i'll strike so i can wrestle gotcha and then so looking at your record you know you've lost to the same guy twice the, your last loss christopher daniels yeah. right yeah yeah <laughs> If the contender series isn't next, is that something you'd want to run back or is that something you're just like, all right, whatever, it's in the past now? I mean, it is in the past. I mean, if it if 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 it were to happen on the contender series, that would be that would be wonderful. That would that would be a blessing in disguise. That would be the best Christmas gift, the best birthday gift anybody can ever give me. Um, but at the moment I don't that doesn't even I don't I don't think about that person at all. That's good. That's good. Um, are there any fighters like in the UFC or in another organization that you look up to maybe style, like mold your style? 
Um, yeah, so somebody I definitely, I, I look at all their fights. I study them. I think they're an amazing fighter. Um, they're actually fighting against Max Holloway soon is Ilya Sapporo. Okay. So he's, he's somebody I've been, um, and I, it's not that I jumped on the hype train after he won. No, I've been watching him since he, um, got into the UFC and I, I said it, I mean, you can go on my Instagram. I have a picture with him from like two years ago and I said he was going to be the 145 pound champ. Um, I, I just think stylistically he, he does have, um, everything that does make a complete fighter. Um, people think he's just a solely, just a, a striker and he has amazing grappling. He was a grappler first, actually. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was a wrestler. Yeah. And then the striking came. Mm -hmm. I, exactly. I, I, I like both guys, but if you could, I don't know if you could see my guy Max over here. Yeah, no, I love I love I'm Max too. For man. Max, man, <laughs> I, I love Max. It, it's a it's a hard one, especially being a like just be sitting back and being a fan instead of a fighter. Um, it's it's a fight that you want to see no matter what, but it, it's hard it's hard to to not like Max. Oh yeah, um, is there anyone else at, at your camp at Goat Shed that maybe isn't in a major promotion yet that you think is like gonna get there at some point? Oh yeah, uh, Roy Echeverria, my main training partner. Um, he's he's uh, somebody I believe that's ready for the UFC and could be a top ten, top five uh, fighter in the flyweight division. Um, he's he's just got unbelievable talent. He's he's good in every avenue of the game. Nice. So last question for me. If you get that contender series shot, right, ideally, you come out there, you get your finish. Is there anyone in the UFC who you'd want for, like, your first fight? Uh, no, beggars can't be choosers. I'm just happy to be there, man. I'll take whoever they give me. Um, whoever they offer, um, I would, I'll say yes to. You know, it's, it's, I'm just grateful, grateful to be there. And if Dana White wants to give me whoever, I'm always happy for that. Hell yeah. All right. Well, I hope you get on to the contender series. I feel like that's a pretty real possibility. And uh, thanks for coming on. Thanks for taking the time. Is there anyone you want to shout out? Maybe plug your socials, anything you want to do before we hop off? Yeah, I mean, uh, if anybody wants to follow me on uh, social media, I'm not the typical fighter. I post some funny things. Um, <laughs> you can follow me at Gus Villamil. It's my full name. Um, and just, you know, hop on the train before it leaves. Hell yeah. Well, all right, Gus. Thanks for coming on, brother. And uh, good luck with everything. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Have a good one.